Hello everyone, this is Vaseem from Edireka and I welcome you all to this session in which I am going to talk about cross-validation in machine learning. So let's take a look at the agenda for this session. First of all, I will start with a basic introduction to cross-validation and moving further, I will tell you about different types of cross-validation techniques. After this, I will tell you about cross-validation API followed by a brief introduction to how you can measure a model's bias variance. And finally, to sum up this session, I will tell you about a few limitations and applications of cross-validation. I hope you guys are clear with the agenda. Also, don't forget to subscribe to Edureka for more exciting tutorials and press the bell icon to get the latest updates from Edureka. Also, do check out the Edureka's machine learning certification program. The link is given in the description box below. Now, without any further ado, let's understand cross-validation in machine learning. So, what exactly is cross-validation? For any model in machine learning, it is considered as a best practice if the model is tested with an independent data set. Normally, any prediction model work on a known data set which is also known as the training set. But in real life scenario, the model will be tested for its efficiency and accuracy with an altogether different and unique data set. Under those circumstances, you would want your model to be efficient enough or at least to be at par with the same efficiency that it shows for the training set. So basically this testing is known as cross validation in machine learning so that it is fit to work with any model in the future. We can also call it as a technique for asserting how the statistical model generalizes to an independent data set. So now that we actually know what cross validation stands for, let us understand its importance in machine learning as well. So let's try to understand cross validation in simple terms. The basic purpose of cross validation is to assess how the model will perform within unknown data set. So imagine you are trying to score a goal in an empty goal. It looks pretty easy and you could even score from a considerable distance too. But the real test actually starts when there is a goalkeeper and a bunch of defenders. So that's why you need to be trained in a real match facing all the heat and still score the goal. In the same case with the statistical model, it is trained in such a way that it excels in its efficiency with other unknown data sets using cross validation. So that is all about cross validation guys. Let's take a look at what are the different types of cross validation. So there are basically two types of cross validation techniques in machine learning. First one is exhaustive cross validation. So this method basically involves testing the model in all possible ways. It is done by dividing the original data set into training and validation sets. For example, we have leave P out cross validation and leave one out cross validation. The other one is non exhaustive cross validation and in this method, the original data set is not separated into all the possible permutations and combinations. For example, we have k-fold cross validation, holdout method, etc. So let's talk about all these uh, different techniques one by one. So first of all, let's talk about k-fold cross validation. In machine learning, there is never enough data to train the model. And even then, if we remove some part of the data, it poses a threat of overfitting the machine learning model. Or it may not recognize a dominant pattern if not enough data is provided for the training phase. So by reducing the data, we also face the risk of reduced accuracy due to the error induced by bias. And to overcome this problem, we need a method that would provide ample data for training and also keep some amount of data for testing as well. So k-fold cross validation does exactly that. So let's talk about how exactly it works. So in this cross validation technique that is k-fold cross validation, the data is divided into k subsets and we take one subset from the data and treat it as the validation set for the model. And after this we keep the k minus one subset for training the model. So the error estimation is averaged for all the k trials to get the effective readiness of the model and each k subset will be in the validation set at least once. So it is also included in the k minus one training set at least once as well. This significantly reduces the error induced by bias and it also reduces the variance as each of the k subsets is actually used in the validation as well. So this is how we can perform k-fold cross validation. Let's talk about the next one that we have which is stratified k-fold cross validation. So in this technique, a slight change is made to the k-fold cross validation. It changes such that each fold will have an approximately equal percentage of samples of each target class as the whole set or in case of prediction problems, the mean responsive value is approximately equal in all of the folds. And in some cases, there is a large imbalance in the responsive variables. Let's try to understand this with an example. So let's say we have a housing price example. So the prices of some houses can be much more than the other houses. 
or in any classification problem the samples may have more negative examples than the positive examples so to tackle this discrepancy we follow the stratified k-fold cross validation technique in the machine learning so that is all about the stratified k-fold cross validation let's talk about the next technique that is holdout method so this is the simplified cross validation method and uh, in this method we randomly assign data points to two data sets the size is not relevant in this case and the basic idea behind this is to remove a part from your training set and use it to get predictions from the model that is trained on the rest of the data this method suffers from high variance since it takes only a single run to execute all of this and it may also give misleading results as well so let's talk about leave p out cross validation now so in this approach p data points are left out of the training data so let's say there are m data points in the data set then m minus p data points are used for the training phase and the p data points are kept as the validation set so this technique is rather exhaustive because the above process that i've just told you about is repeated for all the possible combinations in the original data set and to check the overall effectiveness of the model the error is averaged for all the trials and it becomes computationally infeasible since uh, the model needs to train and validate for all the possible combinations and for a considerably large p as well and then we have the leave one out cross validation this method of cross validation is similar to leave p out but the only difference is that in this case p is going to be is equal to one and it actually saves a lot of time which is a big advantage although when the sample data is too large it can still take a lot of time but it will still be quicker than the leave one out cross validation method and now that we have discussed the different types of cross validation techniques let us take a look at the cross validation api as well so we do not have to implement cross validation manually scikit-learn library in python provides a simple implementation that will split the data accordingly and there are cross validation iterators that are used depending upon the various cross validation strategies for example for k-fold cross validation we have a k-fold scikit-learn class similarly we have leave one out class for scikit-learn and then we have leave p out class stratified k-fold class as well so just to show you guys let us try to use the k-fold using python to create training and validation sets so for this i'll just do one thing guys first of all i'll just go to the jupyter notebook over here so we are in the jupyter notebook guys i'll do one thing first of all i'll uh, import a few libraries like i'll import uh, array from numpy and i will import sklearn dot model selection i am going to import k fold okay i've made a mistake i guess so no errors here guys so first of all i have to sample my data so i'll just take a array so i'll take an array of a few numbers so in inside this i'm just gonna pass a list so 0 0.1 let's say 0 0.2 0.3 0 0.4 so this is my data guys so now i have to split the data for this i'm going to use the k fold so i'll name it as k fold only i'll use the k fold now and inside this i'll pass the data so this is going to be three so i have to split my data into three true and i'll name it as one so no errors here as well so now i'm going to enumerate my uh, splits for that file, I'm going to take for loop and for train and test in let's say k fold dot splits. I'll pass data inside this and uh, I'll just print my train is equal to percentile s and test is equal to percentile s percentile data train and data test so when i run this okay i have an attribute error i write splits over here so i'll just name it as split so as you can see i have actually created a train and test set using this data that i have over here so this is how easily you can use a k-fold cross validation using the scikit-learn implementation because we already have this uh, k-fold class for implementing the k-fold cross validation and similarly we can choose other cross validation iterators depending upon the requirement and the type of data i'll show you what all we have so we have leave one out leave one group out leave one out leave p groups out and we have leave p out and then we have stratified i guess 
so we have stratified k fold and stratified shuffle split as well so there are a lot of different cross validation iterators that we can actually use now moving on let me tell you how we can actually measure the model's bias variance as well. So if we do the k-fold cross validation, we will get k different estimation errors. And in any ideal situation, these errors would sum up to zero. But it is quite highly unlikely to get such results. And to get the bias, we just take the average of all the estimation error. So the model's accuracy is directly proportional to the bias calculated. So the model's accuracy is quite proportional to the bias calculated and to calculate the model's variance we take the standard deviation of all the errors. So if we get a low value of standard deviation it means that our model does not vary a lot with the different sets of training data. And the focus should be to maintain a balance between the bias and the variance of the model. This can be achieved by reducing the variance to the minimum and controlling the bias. And this trade-off usually results in making a better predictive model. But there are a few limitations with cross validation as well. So let's take a look at various limitations with cross validation as well. So these are a few limitations that are faced by cross validation. So in an ideal situation, cross validation will produce optimum results. But in case of inconsistent data, the results may vary drastically. It is quite uncertain what kind of data will be encountered by the model. So that is one limitation we have with cross validation. The next one is predictive modeling often requires an evolution in terms of data and this can pretty much change the training and the validation sets drastically. And the next limitation is the results may vary depending upon the features of the data set. So let's say we make a predictive model to detect an ailment in a person and we train it with a specific set of population. But it may vary with the general population causing inconsistency and reduced efficiency as well. So these are all the limitations that we actually face with cross validation. Now moving on, let's take a look at a few applications of cross validation as well. So with the overpowering applications to prevent a machine learning model from overfitting and underfitting, there are several other applications of cross validation which are listed below. So we can use it to compare the performances of a set of predictive modeling procedure and we can use it for, you know, the cross validation actually excels in the field of medical research. So we can use it for medical research as well. Also, it can be used in the meta analysis since a lot of data analysts are actually they are already using cross validation. So it's a best bet for them as well. And now that we have come to the end of the session, don't forget to subscribe to Edureka for more exciting tutorials and press the bell icon to get the latest updates from Edureka. Thank you. I hope you have enjoyed listening to this video. Please be kind enough to like it and you can comment any of your doubts and queries and we will reply them at the earliest. Do look out for more videos in our playlist and subscribe to Edureka channel to learn more. Happy learning!